So let's shift gears one last time and talk about the emerging data that's coming out. Um, and while we're talking about immunotherapy, uh, Tony, give us a little bit of high-level overview of the microsatellite stable patients, so everybody else. How do we get immunotherapy to them? What is some of the science going on in that direction? So those are the 95 percenters. Right. <laughs> Essentially, everybody else. everybody else. That unfortunately for, uh, for those patients, single agent PD-1 inhibitors or pd l one inhibitors do not have much activity. I can't say it's zero, but it's close to zero. Uh, there may be the occasional patient who benefits for other reasons. But uh, the, the, the reason are these are less hypermutated. They're actually hypomutated for the most. So less mutational burden. And, uh, and that they don't have these infiltrating lymphocytes around their tumors, which are important for uh, these PD-1 inhibitors to, to, uh, to do the job. So we're finding uh, uh, strategies to introduce agents like the MEK inhibitors. Uh, more strategies to include wnt beta catenin inhibitors and, and actually uh, 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 agents like rigorafenic, for example, which hits multiple targets, seems to enrich the tumor uh, with these uh, TILS, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. So a lot of these strategies are being looked at in clinic, combining a PD-1 inhibitor or PD-L1 inhibitor with one of those agents. The ones that far, the one that's farthest out is uh, essentially the study with atezolizumab and uh, cobimetanib, uh, which you know showed uh, promising data in the phase one B, uh, and then moved from the phase one B to the phase three. Completed in, in and this is an, this. Number. So I just want to point this yeah. out in terms of changing landscape is that. That study showed, what, four and a half responses, really. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yes. And, so it was 21%. Yeah, but if you uh, count four the one human beings. Yeah, if you count yeah. the one patient, <laughs> if you count the one patient uh, that uh, essentially didn't have the MSI right. status. Right, so we don't know that one. So right? we don't know so that. So really three responders <laughs> ends up being about 17%. So what's and interesting? And then they launched this huge study, study. To, to look at this. So, so and, the, the yeah. PFS is not impressive. Mm. No. The right. PFS was what you would expect from rigorafenib or from TAS-102. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is, and, and this is where, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a, it will be interesting to see the results of the phase three, whether those few patients who seem to benefit tremendously will be able to pull that curve and pull that median in a positive direction, yeah. uh, at least the survival curve, because I don't know about the PFS curve if it's going to look any different, but so we'll see. Other comments. I think we've got radiation being given to try and induce mm -hmm. more neoantigens or the expose. The effect. Yeah. Chemotherapy combinations are being done around the clock, uh, around, and other biologics and targeted. So it, it's easy for a patient to find a trial with one of these drugs if they're a candidate, right? And, yes. But we, does anybody know the answer yet, or is this no. still, it's exciting. It's very yeah. easy to enroll to these trials. Patients yeah. want them. But the reality out there is we aren't moving the bar that quickly, right? Is that fair? Right. That's a fair assessment. 